transporting blood to and from different parts of the human body. Um, roads connect uh, places, making it possible for people to move from one destination to the other for different purposes. They serve this purpose better when they are good and um, many enough to form a network of ease. With a population that is large enough to spread thin its infrastructure on one hand and a highly uh, mobile economy on the other hand, Lagos in need, Lagos, the nation's commercial uh, nerve center, is always in need of good roads in particular. Now, the question is, what is the state of roads in Lagos? Panorama will situate this question within the context of uh, efforts being made by government to close road infrastructural gaps in Lagos. I am Adeola Komi Akere, and do remember to follow this uh, news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash all live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screens for updates. government says Nigeria is a country fully guided by a constitution that protects the guarantee of the rights of its nationals with no to be having um, some uh, technical glitch there from uh, Lagos uh, Network Center. We continue right here from uh, Abuja. I am Tessie O'Meary. The federal government is seeing Africa's huge infrastructure gap as opportunities for private investment through public-private partnerships. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, while declaring open the Africa Public-Private Partnership Network Investment Summit in Abuja, said all sectors of the economy are yearning for investment. Leah Katung Babatunde has more. Policy makers, public servants, private sector players, and all who matter in the infrastructure space are represented here at the Africa Public-Private Partnership Network, AP3N Investment Summit in Abuja. Africa's private sector currently accounts for more than 80% of total production and two-thirds of total investments, but there is still a lot more to do if the continent must make the best of the free trade area agreement. To stimulate and create a vibrant private sector on the continent and accelerate infrastructure development, a number of issues must be addressed. There is definitely the need to create a welcoming and enabling environment for the businesses to drive. This can be achieved by reducing risk and cost of doing business and by securing private property rights or proprietary rights, improving governance, fighting corruption, simplifying regulations, and promoting competition. Nigeria, like South Africa, is already benefiting from PPP arrangements. I'd like to encourage every member of this network to take full advantage of this investment summit to attract more willing and capable private investors to invest in infrastructure development in Nigeria. Fund is a coward. It goes to an environment where it's well protected. We want to assure international community that their funds are well protected in Nigeria. But a lot still needs to be done. On each airport, for instance, it took us five years to close. And it's very difficult for any private sector to wait for five years. In that five years, uh, some of our partners, foreign partners, lost interest. COVID happened. Investment were directed to other places. The two day summit serves as a nesting place for ideas to be birthed and investor concerns like that of George Nwagu be addressed collectively in Abuja. Leah Katungbaba today, NTA News. And from investment opportunities, let's take a look at the judiciary.
there are renewed efforts at enhancing the efficiency of support staff in the judiciary, targeted towards building public confidence in the justice system. This is to be achieved through the improvement of the day-to-day -day running of the registry at various courts. Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukai de Ariwola, wants judicial officers to work in line with the code of conduct for court employees. You must be effective in your supervision and inspection of the area, Sharia, and customary courts. As doing so, we go a long way in building public confidence in our courts. Fight corruption, laziness, and other inadequacies in the judiciary. We are saddled with the responsibility of overseeing the activities of lower courts and thereby ensure that alien judges are properly guided among among other responsibilities. This you must take seriously to avoid miscarriage of justice in any form. Conducting of investigations, petitions, handling, and delineating of court jurisdictions are some of the insights to be gained at the training workshop for directors and inspectors of lower courts. And the federal government says Nigeria is a country that is fully guided by a constitution that guarantees its citizens' right to freedom of worship, just as it has no policy that denies the citizens' right. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed restated this in London while reacting to a letter written by some Republican senators asking the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urging him to immediately redesignate Nigeria as a country of particular concern under the National or the International Religious Freedom Act. These are the five senators, Senator John Hawley, Senator Marco Rubio, Senator Mike Brown, Senator Umhofel, and Senator Tom Cotton. The senators had written to the U.S. Secretary of State demanding that Nigeria be redesignated as a country of particular concern under the U.S. International Religious Freedom Act. The senators went as far as describing the Secretary of State's decision to remove Nigeria from the list as misguided. Reacting to this development, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed put the records straight. It is not true that Nigeria actually persecutes anybody solely on account of his or her faith. We said this several times, and we're saying it again with all the emphasis at our disposal, because even the constitution of Nigeria guarantees the right of anybody to practice his or her own faith without molestation by anybody. If there is any such acts at all, the minister explained and the federal government's efforts. We have a lot of criminality going on. And these criminals really don't make a distinction between any religion. They kidnap for money. They hold people ransom for money. And then there are some issues also that have to do with communal, you know, uh, matters which date back to uh, many years, many centuries. The only known group that we know that actually targets Christians is Israel. And I'm glad to say that Nigeria as a government has mounted a large-scale military operation to wipe out Israel. And it is yielding results. Today, ISWAP is floundering. Many of its leaders have been eliminated. But you see, what ISWAP is doing, actually, is to cause, is because of their uh, dwindling influence in Nigeria, because they've been displaced largely from the Northeast. They are now attacking, you know, churches and Christians in order to create a uh, 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 crisis between the various, you know, religious groups. But as a government, we are after them. So it is not correct to say that Christians are being persecuted or there's an official policy that uh, denies the Christians the right, you know, to, uh, to practice their religion. 
admitting that there are challenges. He, however, appealed to Nigerians who, for whatever reason or interest they protect, should see Nigeria first. And that what Nigeria for now needs is a friendly relationship, not one that will support in finding the embers of disunity among the people. In London, Anthony Forson, NTA News. The First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, has expressed readiness to collaborate with other development partners towards supporting tertiary education in the country. The First Lady stated this in a message during the presentation of instructional materials to the management of the Federal Capital Territory College of Education, Zuba. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports that the materials include different types of books geared towards enhancing teaching and learning. Presenting the books to the management of the school, the First Lady through the media aid of the Aisha Buhari Foundation, BC Olumide Ajayi, has employed them to use the books judiciously. The First Lady has also called on well-meaning Nigerians to cooperate and uh, corporate organizations as well as non-governmental organizations to put more efforts towards enhancing the education of Nigerian children, especially the girl child. Responding on behalf of the provost of the college, Dr. Mohammed Gambu Hamza, the deputy provost, Dr. Suli Mundi, expressed happiness with the gesture and assured the first lady that the books will be judiciously used. And the Nigerian Navy ship Pathfinder Port Harcourt has officially marked the end of its second quarter assignment for 2023 with a renewed commitment to ensuring the protection of critical national assets within the domain in the third quarter. Commodore Suleiman Ibrahim gave the assurance after a 25-kilometer road march in Port Harcourt. Kingsley Amajiri reports. March from the naval base at Rumolumini Portaco through Wimpy Junction, Ipere Road, Orazi GLA to Ajip Road and back to the base is intended to prepare them for the task ahead. Commodore Ibrahim said, with this exercise successfully completed, the personnel are ready to continue with the fight against criminal elements and assured the business community of a safe heaven for legitimate economic activities to thrive. You know, one major responsibility that has been put upon us is the fight against crude oil tech. On our part, we have done well. He is optimistic that the additional platforms provided would help the command respond appropriately to the security issues within the command's jurisdiction. The Nigerian Navy Ship Pathfinder leadership commended the communities for the reception given them while on the route march and enjoined the public to strengthen collaboration with the command Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. You're still watching Panorama on NTA Network Service. Time now for a break. And when we return, we shall be rejoining our Lagos Network Center, where Adela is on standby for an interview segment. Welcome to Lagos. This is the last lap of Panorama. One key infrastructural demand that has commanded and enjoyed premium attention from the federal government is road construction, with men still ongoing in different parts of the country. In this report, Ruth Aria Samuel takes a look at how Lagos, an emerging mega city and commercial capital of the country, is faring vis a vis the high demand for good roads in the state. Ranked as the most popular city in Africa, Lagos is home to about 20 million people. Yet, it daily plays host to more people who, taking advantage of all the five points of entry by road, visit either for business or pleasure. Across its length and breadth, traffic congestion caused by streams of vehicular movement and poor condition of roads is a regular feature. Normally, if you're driving down 10 Milan, 
you will do less than an hour or 45 minutes thereabout. But now, like yesterday or thereabout, people spent as much as three hours on Ted Mailand Bridge. While the state government is working on some intra-city roads to close the infrastructural gap in the state, the federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, as well as Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, is also busy in the state. From Lagos Ibadan, Lagos Abekuta, and Lagos Badagri Expressway to Ikorodu Shagamu Road, reconstruction work is at various stages to put either the road in the right shape or expand the carriageway for improved capacity. On one side, we have 11 km, uh, 16 kilometers of single carriageway, half of the dual carriageway completed. We will transfer it to the other side. You saw in the early parts from uh, Agbara area where earthworks is going on. Completion time is dependent on weather and so many things. Although gridlock is yet to finally disappear from some of the major corridors, especially where construction works are ongoing, reduction in travel time is already being recorded as part of the gains. For the past two months now, we are enjoying the road. Since they did it, we've been enjoying it. Uh, I think movement can now be more easier. With funding from Sukuk, work on intra-city roads such as Outer Marina Boni Camp, Apapa Oshodi Oronshoki, Old Toll Gate and Eco Bridge are at various stages of completion and will soon be delivered. In Lagos, Ruth Ariel Samuel, NTA News. Joining me via Zoom is Adeda Molakuti, Director, Southwest Federal Highways. Hello, Kuti. Good to have you join us on Panorama. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. All right, now let's go straight. The demand for good roads in Lagos has been a constant when we talk about infrastructural provision. Can we ever bridge this gap? I'm sure we are already heading towards that direction. As uh, you have also noted in your report, that uh, we are having various projects all over the state, all over the state. And the same thing is also happening all over the country. In Lagos, we are having more concrete currently on the critical roads on Lagos, Ibadan, Lagos, Badagri, the production of the uh, expressway towards uh, the auto gate. And uh, the critical bridge is there, the Epo Bridge as well as the Todd Mailand Bridge. So the work is on going and we are heading towards that direction. Okay, good to know. Now, at Pongmo end of Eco Bridge is very critical when we talk about the mainland to the island shuttle. What is going on on that road now after it was damaged by fire in May this year? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, work is ongoing presently. At Pongmo end is just the end of Eco Bridge and the contractors are on ground. And uh, the issue is that it's not um, a project where you just pick up materials in the in the market. You know, some of these materials are manufactured for proper use. So, but the most important thing is that the contractor is on the road, is on the bridge, working, working as you need to ensure that the uh, works are completed so that this particular bridge can be open to traffic. Okay, a lot of people are still very concerned about the Akpongmo Bridge. What time frame do you have to tell them to assuage their worries? Yeah, it's, it's difficult to really um, put a time limit to it because, like I mentioned to you, some of those materials, they need to, you know, they get them from outside Nigeria, from Europe. So manufacturing them and coming back. But we know it's critical. And that is why we also want to urge you, you know, to assist us, assist the government in telling our people to desist from unauthorized uh, trading under most of these bridges. Apart from this, our problem is a poor bridge. We still have other bridges in Lagos that where people are, you know, trading illegally, sleeping, and then we have done it. So for this particular one, work is ongoing. We are on top of the situation. The contractor is on it. That is the most important thing. And uh, I can assure you that very, very soon, that particular section of the bridge will be open. 
Eki um, Expressway. It is now a major worry, you know, for uh, commu commuters along uh, that uh, corridor, coupled with the um, constructions from uh, the Dangote refinery and all what's happening there. Now, um, what uh, is the federal government doing about, uh, you know, this ahead of time to ensure that uh, traffic is not um, congested in that area? Yeah, the the lucky has the one coming from uh, towards uh, uh, Aja area. That one is being handled by Lagos State Government. For ours, we are starting from the deep sea port area towards Ekwe, and uh, so we've not really started any serious work. The contractor has been able to uh, identify um, a yard, and the uh, work will soon start. So the one towards Lekki around Aja area, um, towards the BGC area. That one is being handled by Lagos State Government. Okay. All right. Now, um, it appears that uh, we have issues with maintaining um, our roads. During inspection visits, the minister had been heard complaining about the role people play in destroying, uh, you know, the roads. Now, apart from moral um, suasions and advocacy, what else is on the table to address this challenge? Because now it's the rainy season and those potholes will be covered by flood water and suspecting drivers for speed pass and God help us. Yeah, as a matter of fact, on our own part in the Ministry of Works, even before now, we had prepared seriously for this rainy season. And apart from the major works that uh, we are having in the state, we've also carried out some maintenance work, you know, in preparation for the rainy season. We also did some disaster work in some very critical locations in Lagos so that most of our drains can be desilted. So that one is also uh, presently ongoing. So we have some maintenance work going on in preparation for this uh, city. And then uh, we want to also continue to urge our people. So people should not dump refuse in the open drains and the uh, people should ensure, our uh, people should ensure that they, they don't cut our roads unnecessarily. Whatever remains, we're on top of the situation, just as we are also carrying on maintenance work. Our sister agency, FEMA, Federal Road Maintenance Agency, just doing theirs to ensure that uh, life is uh, uh, a bit smooth and they're getting smoother for our people. Thank you very much, uh, Director of Southwest Federal Highways, Mr. Adedamola Kuti. Thank you for your thoughts with us in Panorama, and I hope that uh, the constructions will, you know, uh, be completed very, very soon. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll move on now to take sports the match uh, we can take on spots but uh, we want to thank you for spending time with us in panorama today and remember that the fastest and easiest way to become a star is to connect with the nta to stand against rape and rapists i am adeola kumiakiri enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>